Recently, I've been making quite a few hour long videos, but today I thought I'd give you a quick trick for quant. It's a lovely trick because it can save a lot of time in a part of the test, usually data interpretation, where you really need time. What topic is this? Average adjustment. In other words, they will tell you an average that they've calculated, but then they'll tell you there's an error or there's some part of the calculation you need to change. And what nine out of 10 students do, and you can admit it if it was you, is you would recalculate the average by adding up all the terms and then dividing by the total. But I bring some good news and I'm gonna demonstrate it in two questions. You don't need to do that. You can simply follow this average adjustment trick and save two minutes at least, and of course, get it right. What type of questions am I talking about? Let's take this example. The table gives information about the revenue and employee numbers of six hotels. Emily calculates the average revenue as being 383,000. So if you look at the table, you can see the revenue in thousands of dollars for each of those six hotels and she has calculated the average as being 382,000, which we can trust as being correct. However, the table contains an error, oh dear, which is that the Lotus Flower Hotel actually had revenue of $837,000. And then they ask, what is the actual average revenue of the six hotels? And again, I ask you to confess, would you have done the following? 837,000, that's the new total for Lotus Flower, plus 254,000 for Hotel de Orient, plus 354,000 for Hotel Blossom, etc., etc. But now imagine the chart had 16 hotels or 26 hotels. You would really be in trouble, wouldn't you? It'd be taking a long time. So, how can we avoid that long method? First of all, just quickly, there's no need to write out the thousands. You can simply write out the individual numbers which would be 837, 254, 354, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. No need to write out the zeros. You can add the zeros at the end. But even with that saving measure of avoiding the zeros, imagine this table had far more rows, as I said. This would be an impractical method. So what's my method? If you follow along, there are three steps to saving those precious one or two minutes. First step, is calculate the error. How big of an error has been made? Step one, calculate the error amount. We know the actual total for Lotus Flower Hotel was 837,000. Again, we're not gonna write the zeros to save time, so 837. But in the table, it was 777. If we take those two away from each other, we get an error amount of 60. Now we know that's $60,000, but let's just for now call it an error of 60. Now to give you an insight about how that affects the average, clearly that's not gonna affect the average by 60 because that was just one error for one hotel. However, if we divide that 60 by six, we're averaging out that error of 60 across the six hotels to see what the effect is on the overall average. So that's step two. You divide the error by the number of terms, in this case, by the number of hotels. 60 divided by six tells me that on average, the error per hotel was 10. And now you might be able to guess the ending. You might be able to guess step three. Step three is that if the average is 10 on average, meaning $10,000, then the real average is not the 383,000 that Emily calculated, it would be 10,000 above that. Just quickly, the reason we add it on rather than subtract is because the error was in the upward direction. We actually had 60,000 more revenue than we thought, not less. So dividing the 60 by six told us that we on average underestimated by $10,000. So the real total is 383 plus 10 or 393, which is of course 393,000. So to summarize, because I'm gonna test you in about 30 seconds. Step one, you find the error. They might just tell you the error, or you can calculate it by finding the difference between what was presented in the chart versus what the actual amount is. Step two, divide that error 
by the number of terms, in this case, by the number of hotels, to find the average error. And step three, once you've found the average error, either add that on or take it away from the average you're given to find the true average. And I bet at this point, many of you have minds that are blown because you're like, wow, that's 20 seconds, whereas my method would have been two minutes. Now, obviously, I'm taking my time to explain, but using this method, you can see one quick subtraction, that's 10 seconds, dividing by six, that's like two seconds, and then adding 10, that's another five seconds. So really, it can be done in 20 seconds, saving a huge amount of calculation. Okay, are you ready for your test? Try this question on your own and see if you can use this average adjustment method to save those two minutes. I'm now gonna run through it a bit quicker this time because I think you get the picture. Emily calculates the average number of employees as being 1,404. However, eagle-eyed Emily spotted another mistake, which is that Hotel Blossom recently let 132 employees go and had not updated their figures. Ah, so the actual number of employees was 132 less than that. What was the actual average number of employees across the six hotels? Now, we're not going to do it the slow way of adding those six hotels up, including the new total after we take away 132 from Hotel Blossom. No, we're going to save time. What are we going to do? Step one, we're going to calculate the error. Except here, there's no calculation. We know the error amount was 132. There was actually 132 fewer employees at Hotel Blossom than the chart says. So no need for calculation, the error was 132. Step two, we divide that error across the six hotels to give us an average error of 22. Now, do we take that away from 1404 or do we add it on to 1404? Remember, 1404 was the average that Emily calculated initially with the wrong figures. Well, the 1404 was an overestimation because it included those 132 employees that actually had been fired. So we take away the 22 from that average. 1404 take away 22 gives us 1382, which is the true average. And now you have learned how to do average adjustments. I have seen this question come up countless times in practice tests, and I've never yet seen a student use this shortcut to save an amount of time. In fact, many students don't even do it the slow way. They just give up because the chart usually has 12 rows or 24 rows, for example. Either way, if you think you'll benefit at all from this trick, please do let me know in the comments. And of course, as ever, if you like the video, leave a like and subscribe if you are new to the channel. I know I've got a lot of new people at the moment because of my recent very popular vocab video. So welcome to everyone watching. I hope you enjoy the channel.